Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to the City of Coquille, uh, our annual Chamber of Commerce Awards Banquet. Uh, we want to start this evening's program with an invocation, and I'm going to ask uh, Chief Warren Brainerd of the Confederate, uh, Confederate, Confederated Tribes to step forward to do the honor. Thank you. It is our tradition to pray to the Creator and Grandfather and Grandmother. And if you'll please stand, we'll have a moment. Green Spirit, Skulu, Umashi, again we come to you with, with praise. We are very grateful for the things that you bring us, the good friends, the food, the place to live, the the things that bring us together to help us all to have a better life. We are grateful that you look upon us to help us and guide us as we walk this life's path. We ask you to continue to watch over us and guide us, and especially our warriors, our elders, our youth, and our women. Amen. Amen. First thing I'd like to do this evening is to um, uh, acknowledge the great turnout we have this evening. So a round of applause for all of us that are here this evening. I was talking to uh, some folks at the table and I, I don't remember quite as many people attending this banquet uh, at least over the last 10 years. So I would say this is probably the best turnout we've had over the last 10 years. So welcome to the Chamber of Commerce's uh, annual awards banquet, a special time for us to get together and celebrate individuals and businesses that have accomplished much this last year and they're so important to our community. I did want to uh, say one thing uh, and I think we owe them a round of applause too. The music provided tonight was from uh, the country train. So a round of applause for this day. What a wonderful touch of class this evening to have those folks here. And I, I should recognize them by name. Uh, the trio consisted of uh, Don Berg. I think Don is still probably eating somewhere. Uh, Jennifer Sordell and Chris Brown. And uh, we want to thank those folks for being with us tonight. Chris, Chris happens to be the uh, music director uh, at the school, in the school district, Coquille School District. So we are blessed to have him a uh, part of our school district, and we, we thank the uh, trio for being here this evening. Um, I want to recognize, as we start this evening, uh, a couple individuals, several individuals that are here, uh, and I want to recognize the elected officials that are with us this evening. Uh, I want to start first with Commissioner Bob Main. Uh, Bob is there. Bob, thank you for being with us. I want to recognize also Commissioner John Sweet. John, thank you for being with us. I want to recognize also the mayor of Coquille, uh, Mayor Rao, I believe is toward the back. Or, or outside. He's waiting for his entrance later on this evening, so we'll, uh, I'll keep him in the wings for a few uh, minutes longer. I also want to recognize the city councilors uh, that are here tonight for the city of Coquille. Uh, Fran Capehart, uh, Fran is here. Dave Chappelle is here this evening with us. Dave. Susan Heaton is here this evening with us. Susan. And also, uh, Dennis Graham is here this evening. No, Dennis is not here. Uh, Linda Short. Linda Short is here. I'm sorry, Linda. We appreciate very much the service of our elected officials, and we always appreciate them being with us uh, this evening uh, as we go through these awards. Um, I want to take a moment also before we get into the program to uh, acknowledge uh, several individuals and businesses that have contributed to make this evening a success. And if you look at your uh, program this evening, on the back page, it acknowledges uh, the individuals that have contributed to the success of this evening, the Coquille Eagles, uh, the music uh, provided by the Contra Swings, 
the catering by Colleen's, the centerpieces by Coquille Floral, Coquille Valley Hospital with the tablecloths, the plaques, and the desserts uh, furnished by those uh, businesses and those friends. So a big round of applause for all those that have made this evening. I want to also take a moment uh, and recognize uh, the uh, members of the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and officers that serve faithfully uh, the city for the last year, uh, 2015. And what I'd like to do is I read off their names if they are here this evening. I'd like them to stand please and we'll hold our applause until they all uh, have stood. Uh, last year's Board of Directors and Officers included um, Kathy uh, Simonetti, Simonetti. We'll hold our applause until later. Uh, Dave Waters. I don't think he's here. Uh, he's not here. Diane Courtright is here. Uh, Karen Van Leuven. Heather Echevarria. Uh, Susan Heaton, I know a student's here. Uh, Linda Short. Karen Tucker. And Ben Marchand. So a warm round of applause for the folks that serve on the And now let's welcome and introduce the uh, newest members of the Kokio Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and Officers. And I'll have them stand again. Uh, I'll ask Kathy Simonetti to stand again, who will serve again as our president. Uh, Vice President David Waters, uh, the Treasurer Diane Courtright, the Secretary Heather Echevarria, uh, the Board Members Donna Huntley, uh, Susan Heaton, Michelle Paquette, uh, Linda Short, Diane Williams, uh, Ben Marchant, and again the Executive Director Diane Courtright. A uh, round of applause for these folks. tonight, quite frankly, are going to be very relaxed, uh, unlike the court of law and the courtroom where I serve day after day. These are very relaxed rules. We want this to be a fun evening, an informal evening, uh, plenty of give and take. You know, we're going to recognize individuals. We'll have the individual step forward. The presenters of the awards, we encourage you to say some words about the recipients. We'd like the recipients to say a few words if they choose to say some words. This is a celebration. Uh, most of you folks have been here before, you know how it works. This is our one chance during the year to celebrate the accomplishments of individuals that have given uh, a lot to our community over the last year, uh, to recognize businesses that have been so valuable in our community the last year, our one and only chance to do that. So uh, let's make this as a, fun, a fun evening. We'll celebrate together as we, as we recognize these individuals. Uh, I also would encourage you, if you want to continue to visit the bar this evening, there's nothing wrong about standing up and going back and getting some refreshments. Uh, there may well be some chocolate desserts still left at the dessert table. It's not going to offend me. It's not going to offend anybody if you continue to visit the dessert table or, uh, or to get some refreshments this evening. So please do that. Um, we're going to do a fun thing this evening as we go along. We actually have some drawings. Um, for some prizes. Uh, we're going to draw some numbers as we go along this evening uh, for the place settings on the respective tables and also we have about five or six gifts uh, that we'll give out during this evening. So what we're going to do, if, if you look at the, uh, the little glass that each of you uh, brought in with you this evening, there should be on the bottom of the glass a number. If you want to look at that, that is your number. And from time to time this evening, we're going to uh, read off some numbers. And if you are, in fact, the uh, winner, uh, you'll be entitled to either a place setting uh, or a uh, prize. And I think what we'll do to get this uh, festivity starting this evening is I think we'll do about five drawings, Diane. And I'll ask Diane in the back. Diane, are these going to be for the place settings or for a gift? Okay, call out the number for a place. Oh, that's right. The center, and by the way, if we read off your name, if you win a centerpiece, don't just take it and leave immediately. Okay. <laughs> Try to bear with us this evening. And uh, at the end of the evening, uh, just grab a centerpiece and take off. So, Diane, the first number. Okay, so we're going to be 110. 110. For a, 
on centerpiece. Somebody has one? Perfect. There's a centerpiece. Draw one for a, uh, draw one for a centerpiece, then. All right, we'll move right along. 18. There's 53. 53. For a centerpiece, 53. There we go. 53, perfect. A center, another centerpiece, Diane. 125. 125. Let's let's take a gift, uh, a gift certificate or something. What, what do you have back there? A gift. Cookies. Give us a number. Just give us a number. Just grab a number. One thirty-three for some Girl Scout cookies. One thirty-three. And Diane, one more, please, for a. Um, let's do a, another gift. Another gift, one more number please, as quick as you can. Uh, this is a gift certificate from Susan. Just draw a number. 38. 38 for a gift certificate for something. Perfect. All right. We'll draw, we'll draw those periodically this evening, so hang on to your numbers, you still may be a winner. Uh, it is a tradition uh, for the Chamber of Commerce Awards Banquet uh, to spend a few minutes um, with our mayor uh, presenting the State of the City Address. So please welcome, if you would please, Mayor Matt Rao. How's everybody doing this evening? I gotta say, uh, isn't Judge Stone a treasure? This guy, this guy goes to everything and does everything, and he doesn't ask anything for it. Uh, he deserves a better round of applause than that. Come on, folks. Now, when Judge Stone talked to me about doing the state of the city this year, he reminded me that they were brief remarks. And so I will try and make the judge proud. Now, this year, I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is the fourth time I've given a state of the city here at this chamber dinner. It's the biggest one we've ever had, by the way, as far as, as long as I've been mayor, and it's great. And I think it's a testament to our Chamber of Commerce, its new leadership, the energy they've got and the things they're doing. Let's hear it for the chamber. Also, part of what this event is about is about the backbone of our communities, our civic organizations and their volunteers. Cities like Oak Hill couldn't deliver the services and the quality of life we have in this town if it wasn't for groups like the Rotary and Kiwanis and Lions. And these folks are going to be honored here tonight. Let's hear it for them. Now, something I'm going to do tonight in this state of the city, a little bit different than in years past, and I know this is going to seem a little bit strange. I'm going to bring it down a notch, and we're going to have a nice conversation about where we are and where we're going, to talk about things we've done right and things we can do better. And I'm going to focus my comments on three major policy areas tonight, and that's public works and streets, economic development and city finance, and public safety. Now, I'm proud to report in the area of public works two really small victories, but they're happy victories. One thing I heard nonstop when I ran for mayor the first time on the doorsteps, besides the streets and the economy and other issues, was that we needed a new fish cleaning station down at Sturdivant Park. <laughs> and when I got elected, because it had been shut down, it had been shut down, there was nothing there. When I first got elected, we made it a priority, we opened it back up, 
and our public works guys, God bless them, were taking fish guts out every day because the grinder was broken, but we got it reopened. But we needed a new one, and we needed one that was uh, Americans with Disability Act accessible. Because I've always believed that just because you have a disability doesn't mean you can't enjoy all of the assets our community has to offer. And so, in partnership with the Port of Bandon and the Oregon Marine Board, we secured the funds last month to get a brand new fish cleaning station, and it's going to be open this summer just in time for a great fishing season, and I think that's wonderful. And our public work, thank you. And part of our philosophy at the city of doing more with less, our public works guys have stepped up, and we're not going to contract it out. We're going to do it in-house and save the taxpayers money. And whatever money we don't spend is going to go back. So I'm very proud of that, too. Our guys have really, really stepped up. Another thing we're doing in the areas of parks and recreation, and this is something where we can say we are partnering effectively with our friends at the county, and I see Commissioner Sweet there, and he has always been an avid supporter of the Rails the Trails program to connect the Coquille River Walk to the Johnson Mill Pond property. We desperately need a good uh, running path, biking path, activity path, and we're partnering together, we're working together, and I think we're going to get it done. It's just a matter of time. So let's hear it for our friends at the county for partnering with us on that. Another thing I'm excited about in public works, because a lot of people forget when I ran for mayor the first time, I made it clear my top priority for discretionary spending was for street improvements. Now, I'm very proud of my record in this regard, and it's been done as a team effort of working with the city council, the budget committee, the community, and staff. And when we started in the 2013 fiscal year budget, we had $100,000 a year for street improvements. Now, if anybody's ever talked to John Higgins around town, he'll tell you when he was public works director, we needed about a million dollars a year. Now, I can't say we've gotten to a million dollars a year yet, but in this third budget since I've been mayor, working with this current council, we've gotten $636,000 for this year's budget, and we're moving in forward momentum, and we are growing, and we will get to that million dollar goal, and we're gonna roll back the potholes, and the glut, and the axle breakers, and thank God for a good council and good staff, we're making progress on this issue. And by the way, that's without a tax increase, and I think that's pretty darn great. And like I told Mr. Heikola, we're finally getting his street this year, so let's hear it for the folks on First Avenue. We're going to finally get the axle breakers fixed. I promised Paul I'd say that, and hopefully he'll slip me 20. <laughs> now, I won't lie to you. I'm not going to promise you a panacea. I can't say we're going to get all of our problems in this area fixed overnight. But we're making forward momentum. This city is making forward momentum on this area. And I know our council knows, and they just got to ask all of you, that potholes matter and roads matter. And this is still going to be my top priority for discretionary spending in the next year as your mayor. Now, in the area of economic development and finance, I want to start off with some what I consider wonderful news. Some people may have different opinions on this. But we have been shortlisted as a community by the Oregon Department of Transportation to create a maintenance yard on the Georgia Pacific site that would be a $9 million investment, 40 permanent jobs, and a 70-year contract. Now, 40 jobs in the city of Coquille is tantamount to nearly 10,000 jobs in the city of Portland. This is a major investment. Some people may not want that for the GP site, but it's the first serious bite we've had in 25 years, and I'm not gonna stick my nose up at jobs and money. I also wanna go back briefly on roads and give another compliment to our friends at the county, actually. A lot of people forget we have that nasty slide across from City Hall. And, of course, some people know I say some critical things from time to time about our friends in the courthouse, but I've got to give them their due when they're due. And Commissioner John Sweet is the commissioner's liaison to the road department, and we have a joint management agreement, intergovernmental agreement, on that section of road. And so I've been very pleased, and my staff has been very pleased to work with our friends in the county and to work with Commissioner Sweet, and it's been a treat. They're assuming half of the responsibility for fixing that disaster slide, so that won't eat into this big uh, budget we built for road improvements. And so let's give them credit, too, for that.
One of the best tools we have in economic development at this city is our urban renewal district. Now I know urban renewal districts are controversial, but we had that debate and it was passed and we have them now in this city. That said, after having this program for nearly 20 years, I have to say I don't believe the citizens are getting their tax dollars worth. I believe, and I think every business person here and every taxpayer here believes we could use this as a tool for meaningful economic development, to revitalize the downtown, to improve our utilities, to improve infrastructure, to fix buildings that are fire traps and can't be insured and make them insurable and make them rentable so we can get small businesses here. And so I want to lay the gauntlet down before the city council and I want to ask them that we need to develop a meaningful urban renewal program that can create jobs, clean up blight, or get rid of the thing and give the people a tax break. Let's have a meaningful program. But I think the best sign of progress we're making here as far as the economy is concerned is this room here tonight. We've got entrepreneurs, we've got volunteers, we've got energy. A lot of small towns, I talk to a lot of the mayors, I'm active in the Mayor's Association, I've got a lot of friends who are towns, uh, mayors of small towns, and they talk about how their towns are dying on the vine. Now we may have had a bad season or two, but I think we're growing and we're getting stronger and the energy in this room I think proves it. So. Let's keep building, let's keep moving forward. We have economic progress. I'm very excited about this ODOT opportunity. And let's get our downtown revitalized so we can get some real economic development across the board in our city. And the final section I'm going to talk about is public safety. And this is the one that is a challenge for all of us. But let me say this. Despite the fact that sometimes you have sudden transitions in leadership and departments, I'll tell you, our guys in the police department are solid, they are strong, they are great people, and they're soldiering and moving forward under new leadership. And let's hear it for our police department. These guys, and I'm not being sexist to snow male unit right now, uh, it would be great to get some female officers, but these guys work under immensely difficult circumstances. One of the unique challenges we have being the county seat is that we had the benefit a long time ago when budgets were good of having all the economic activity that a you know county seat had. Now we get some of the negatives because budgets are tight. The money isn't there to fund the jail like it used to. And despite the best efforts of our friends at the county, we have come down to 49 jail beds. And I don't think anybody is exactly happy about that. But that puts the men who work in our police department under immense pressure they work so hard, they work long hours, they work overtime, and trust me, I know how much these guys make, they're not in it for the money. So let's hear it for them again. The first role of civil government is to keep our people safe from crime. I believe we are still one of the safest communities in the state. We were the fifth most safe city in the state the year before. This year we're not in the top 10, and I think the reasons are obvious. It's the challenges we have with law enforcement in this county, and it's not just here, it's in other counties, it's a challenge. But our people are vigilant. They know to call the police if there's a challenge. We have fine officers. We have a sheriff and a district attorney who want to do their jobs to the best of their ability. And yet, the answer to our problems still seems to elude us, but I know that we can solve these problems by working together, city and county and other districts, to make sure we get past this 49 jail bed crisis, because it is. And anybody who owns a business downtown can tell you, this is a crisis, it affects sales, it affects quality of life, and sadly, it is getting worse by the day, and it will get worse as the weather improves. But our officers, and our community, and our volunteers, and our business owners will be vigilant and make it through another season of this, hopefully by that time, by the next season, we'll find an answer that we can all work on together to at least get us back up to 98 jail beds. So I'm pleased to say, despite challenges, hope springs eternal. We have a wealth of assets. We have newfound interest in economic development. I think our council, if they hear from the people, will adopt a more ambitious urban renewal policy that can revitalize our downtown area. I think we will make more 
investments and street improvements in the next year. And I can say that the county will have the city as a friend in trying to find any solution to this jail bed crisis. So uh, the state of our city is strong, and with God's help, it'll keep getting stronger. God bless our great city, and thank you for this opportunity tonight. It's time for a drawing. It's time for five drawings. Uh, so let's find your glasses again. Uh, I'm going to ask Diane to give us, uh, let's do this for one of the table settings again, Diane. Uh, number 80, as in 8-0. This is for a place setting. Nobody? Oh, they just left? Somebody left. <laughs> they've got it. Okay. I'll do another one with a place, a centerpiece. Diane? Number 48. 48 for a centerpiece. 48. Going, going. Perhaps it's mine. No, you're 44. No 48s? I have a wish. Check mine. Yeah, 40, you're, you're 44. 44. I'm 44. What do you get? We'll take care of you. All right, Diane, let's do a, uh, a gift. A, other than a centerpiece. Center. Who is a 44? All right, go for it. Just give us a number. Six, seven, oh. up front here, thank you. Let's draw one again for this, a centerpiece, please. 54, and Lynn's got 54. And one more for a centerpiece. One twenty-four for a centerpiece. One twenty-four. Very well. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, folks, is that we also have a fifty-fifty drawing at the end of the evening. So if you need to buy some fifty-fifty tickets, uh, stroll back. Uh, Diane will sell those for you or to you, and we'll we'll do that drawing at the end of the uh, uh, evening's festivities. We've had a tr tradition here in the city of Coquille at the awards banquet uh, each year to have a speaker uh, who steps forward, uh, he or she, and presents uh, some remarks uh, on topics that have been varied over the years. We're changing uh, our program a bit this evening, and instead of doing a speaker, having a speaker giving a program, we thought it most appropriate this year instead uh, to recognize two businesses uh, that have been pillars of our community uh, for the last 100 years. Uh, recognizing them and celebrating with them uh, 100 years of service uh, and dedication to our community. So we want to spend a few minutes doing that this evening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a representative from the Coquille Sentinel uh, to step forward and to assist me in recognizing the businesses that we're going to honor this evening and presenting trophies to the recipients. And I've asked, I've asked the recipients this evening to spend a few minutes with us after we give them the trophies and to share with us a few thoughts about uh, their business and perhaps how it's evolved over the last few years about, not the last hundred years uh, and also if, if they can to introduce to us uh, the folks that are seated at their table that they brought with them as friends and family members. So having said that, I, I want to mention one other thing. We, we thought it was most appropriate to have the Coquille Sentinel assist in uh, giving out the trophies this evening because as many of us know, or perhaps many of us do not know, the Sentinel has been in business for 135 years. So a round of applause for the Sentinel.
I also want to thank the Sentinel because the Sentinel did in fact uh, purchase the trophies that are going to be given to our uh, celebrants this evening. So having said that, uh, the first uh, folks that we want to introduce and recognize are the representatives this evening of Amling Schroeder. So if I could have uh, Jay and Ernie step forward. that are up here with me, uh, we know both of them, uh, long-time uh, contributors to our community. Uh, Ernie Amling has been here uh, many, many, many years. Uh, we've gotten to know Ernie over the years, uh, active in many, many projects and service groups in our community. And Jay Westrom is here this evening also. And Jay is the owner of um, Westrom uh, Funeral Service and now the owner of uh, Amling Schroeder. So we want to recognize both of these individuals tonight, Ernie because of the history with Amling Schroeder, and Jay because he is in fact the newest owner, the new owner of Amling Schroeder. So I'm going to ask Gene to make the presentation, and then I'm going to allow Ernie and Jay to say anything they'd like to say this evening. Uh, be careful. <laughs> yeah, be, be careful. I shouldn't have said that to Ernie. He's all fired up now. So. I, I just would like to say thank you for 100 years of service to our community. In the community. mic, Jane, in the mic. Thank you for 100 years of service to our community. Wish you 100 more. Yeah. Hello, does this work? <laughs> I there were this many people in the, my whole life. Uh, we've been doing this work for, for the three communities, Dan and Coquille and Myrtle Point, uh, for many years, but not a hundred. Like close, we're working on a hundred. And uh, I feel like we've, uh, we've, uh, this is what happens when you get old. <laughs> we thought it was just a tear. But I wouldn't want a, anybody better than in this group here as good citizens and uh, hello. <laughs> longevity. Quick uh, introduction of our table. Um, of course, Ernie Amling, um, his uh, daughter Laura, um, Debbie Grant, Paul and Kay, Paul and Kay are standing at Heichel over there. Uh, Kelly White is um, my director down in Bandon. Uh, my daughter is uh, Abby and Miranda. And uh, my significant other, Tanoka. Um, thank you very much. I think I still have Gene up here. So Gene's next to me again. We want to recognize uh, our other recipient of a 100-year award, and, and 
these folks, uh, they they fill up an entire table and then some and send some. They've over they've over <coughs> the table. And, yes, uh, many folks are here this evening from Fars, and I, I can tell you from experience, Fars has been such a major economic force, positive force in our community. And I'm going to ask Jay Farr to step forward, and maybe one or more, uh, Mary, step forward also. Um, and we want to just take a moment. We've got a whole bunch of folks. I'm going to have Jay make the introductions in just a second. But again, we want to congrat, we want to acknowledge, and we want to congratulate Farr's for a hundred years of service in our great county. So a round of applause for Farr. Thank you very much. Um, the folks that are here uh, up in front, I'd like to introduce, um, have all had management roles or have management roles in our business. Um, the business started in 1916 uh, with a gentleman named Cecil Elwood, who uh, started a business down here between the railroad tracks and the river as a transfer and storage business. And a few years later, um, our grandfather, some of our grandfathers, some of our great grandfather and great great grandfather, um, Chester Farr came to town as a county commissioner, county uh, extension agent. And uh, at that time, the county was uh, very um, dependent upon the milk business, and the milk market went to heck, and so did Chet's job. And so he was looking for uh, something to do here in Coquille because they loved the area. And by that time, uh, uh, my father, Leonard Farr, had been born here in Coquille to, to, uh, to join the family of his older brother, uh, Donald Farr, who many of you knew, I'm sure, and uh, their, uh, their sister, Edith Farr. Um, so in uh, about 1921, uh, my grandfather um, bought the business from Cecil. Cecil went out to try farming. Well, a couple of years later, uh, that wasn't his thing. So he came back and said, Chet, how about if I work for you? Chet said, no, let's be partners. And so for the next uh, 20 years or so, uh, the business was known as Farr and Elwood. Uh, in 1927, uh, they expanded to the um, growing town of Marshfield and uh, build a building there, um, right next to the, to the building that we occupy today. Um, as many of you know, small businesses um, are, uh, are not a, a very sure thing um, in, our, in our country. And uh, if you get to a second generation, you've done a lot. If you've gotten to a third generation, you've done a lot more. Um, we have uh, here in front of you um, uh, members of the, th the third, fourth, and fifth generation uh, of our business. And my mother, Joyce, um, who is a member of the second generation, is here with us tonight, too. Uh, past owners who have uh, gone on to successfully retire, which is something that is a real uh, accomplishment in the hardware business, are my cousins, Mary and Paul Farr, Mary Farr Woolley and Paul Farr, um, who, uh, whose children uh, and uh, nephew and niece and grandniece, or grand, grand, uh, grand nephew, are here tonight. Um, and so it, it really has been a, uh, a family business all through these years. Um, the current ownership um, and management includes Jim Farr, who is Paul's son, and then 
someone that we picked up from, uh, from Arizona. Um, we're very fortunate because he fits the same profile as far as he's not very tall <laughs> and he, he moves pretty fast and he's, uh, he's a delight for those of you who have known him here in the Coquille store and we're happy to have him more in the Cuspe store now, um, Chris Liga. And then Paul's granddaughter, Jim's daughter, Lisa Farr, and there's a fifth generation, is, uh, is working full-time at our Coos Bay store. So we've had a, a wonderful run of 100 years. We, we'd like to extend that into the future. And we think that we have the tools and the management to continue uh, into the future. It's a successful small family business. And we really appreciate all of the support that this community and this area has given to our, uh, to our business over the hundred years that we've been here. Thank you very much. taking their seats, it's time for a drawing. Uh, like five drawings, Diane, give us a drawing for a centerpiece, please. Is that 126 for a centerpiece? You've called the same number twice. Uh, she's called that twice? No, was it 26 or 126? 126. Going, going, no thank you. Try another number, Diane, quick. 11 we got for a centerpiece, thank you. And one more for a centerpiece, please. Uh, 34. 34. Got it for a centerpiece, perfect. Try a, try a prize, Diane, something. Oh uh, yeah, are you passing a gift certificate from Breeze. Perfect. Draw a number and we're good to go. 32. Perfect. Let's draw another number for a centerpiece, please. Let's draw a number for a centerpiece. 17. 117. Oh, 117. 117. Perfect. Diane, do you have a, a gift certificate back there? Perfect. And the number is 136. 136 from Catherine's uh, shop. Somebody get that? 136? Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, that'll, we'll, we'll draw some more uh, in a few minutes. I want to keep this program moving along. Uh, and we, we enter the next phase of our program, which is uh, to recognize some individuals and businesses uh, that have done um, that have done a lot this last year for our community. Uh, this is the uh, awards presentations, and you're, we're, we're going to follow along um, pretty much so with what's listed in your program. And I'd like to start with uh, the Kokio Kiwanis, and I'm going to have. Uh, Colleen, step forward. Colleen is here. Perfect. Uh, Colleen Quigley, thank you. I'm delighted to be here, and the Kiwanis Club is a wonderful club. We are open for members. Anyone that wants to join us is welcome to. We meet Thursday nights at Figaro's at 6 o'clock. So feel free to join us. We have an active group. We're involved with, of course, the Gay 90s Pancake Breakfast. We also have our annual yard sale that's down at Sturdivant Park in August. And those are our two major things we do. 
but we have lots of other fun things we do. So consider joining us. Now tonight, my recipients for the Kiwanis Club is a couple. And I would like Corky and Jenny Daniels to please come oh. over. and Jenny and know how much they do for everybody and it's no exception with Kiwanis. They're always there. They hold offices and for many years when we get them in we hardly can get them out because we need them. But they're just wonderful and I am so honored to give this award to Jenny and Courtney. Yes. You say whatever you want to say. You want to say something? You make me want to cry. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to thank the Kiwanis Club. And the big, the big mic. I'd like to thank the Kiwanis Club for this honor. And I wouldn't be up here and have done the things I've done if she wasn't standing right alongside of me. <laughs> Thank you, Kalita. Uh, the next award we want to give out uh, is the Coquille Valley Hospital uh, Volunteer of the Year. And I'm going to ask Karen Loudermilk to step forward to make that presentation, please. I think Karen is... There she is. Clear in the back. Karen is the CEO of the Tokyo Valley Hospital, New York Bills. I have with me in the mellow yellow, uh, <laughs> Connie Siegel, and beside her is Michelle Paquette, who is our community relations person at the hospital and she works very closely with the Zillions so that's why she's here and um, Connie Siegel of course who is our volunteer of the year and I want to tell you a little bit about Connie um, she has been a volunteer at our hospital since 2011 and Connie assists in a variety of projects and she really goes above and beyond clearly uh, every day. In fact, she goes so much above and beyond, it feels like she's part of a fixture at Coquille Valley Hospital. Um, she works up to half time every week, and that's a significant amount of time that she is spending um, working with us every day. And I'll tell you a little bit about her duties at the hospital. Um, she does um, she, the editorials for the newsletter for the auxilians at the hospital. Um, and we have a number of auxilians at the hospital, I think a total of about 60, and we're very pleased to have all of them work for us. And so what she does is support the marketing department um, and administration. She does many duties and tasks for us. I don't know what we would do without her. And she also helps in the Valley View Kitchen um, in our dietary area. So if you're ever there visiting, you will see Connie there helping our dietary staff serve. And you'll also see her really um, just about everywhere in the organization. So as I say, she is like a permanent fixture in the organization. We're so happy to have her. And I just want to tell you a few personal things about her as well. Connie has four granddaughters. She has eight grandsons. They span in age from 14 to 30 years. She has two great-grandchildren. And what Connie really enjoys doing is um, things like uh, sewing and particularly she enjoys embroidery and she really enjoys gardening and walking in the woods around her home. So I'm really honored to recognize Connie for all of the hard work that she does for our organization. She's a very dedicated employee and she truly exemplifies what it means to be a volunteer. And it is just a real pleasure and an honor for, for me to recognize Connie. Now, Connie said she doesn't want to talk. 
Uh, she's definitely a woman of few words, but she takes all of that energy of her words and puts it into very hard work. So I'm just so pleased. Please join me in recognizing Karen. Society. It's identified as Outstanding Youth Volunteer, and I believe, is Terry Craig's going to present the award? Perfect. Thank you. As most of you know, the Coke Hill Valley Museum is run by the Coke Hill Valley Historical Society. We address not only Coquille, but all the communities up along all of the fingers of the Coquille River. Um, a lot of you haven't been aware of that, which, you know, I really want to extend that, the importance of that information. This year, we had the opportunity of having a volunteer come who was an archeologist, who had been hired in this community as a nanny for a young girl and her parents really lucked out when they hired Yvonne Cher Sky. Yvonne brought along with her and all of her knowledge to the museum a young lady named Ashley Federson. Ashley's in the seventh grade and worked all summer long at our museum, learning all the ins and outs of cataloging, learning our computer program, helping Yvonne Cher do anything she could do, Ashley became quite the photographer. And she's our first youth volunteer. And what we'd like to give her is the Youth Volunteer of the Year Award. And she's our first recipient. Ashley, could you please come up? And she attends She's a member of the band, and she doesn't want to talk, but I told her she had to say thank you. <laughs> and the community does appreciate volunteers like you. I've never known a community like Coke Hill that has so much support from volunteers, and you ought to be proud to be here with us. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> Okay, I just want to thank the Coquille Valley Museum for all of this opportunity that I've had for last summer, and just thanks for everything that I achieved and earned during that period of time. The next award is going to be presented uh, the Rebecca's Lodge um, Merit Jewel Award. And I believe, um, is it Hester Solsing? Very well. The Ad Fellows and Rebecca's are um, a part of this community and have been for many years. Um, I know over a hundred years, and our member Edna Parshall has been a member of the Rebecca Lodge here for 54 years. She's a very can-do person and has a contagious enthusiasm. Her volunteering in the community started way back in 1963 as a den mother of a Cub Scout pack, and she has spearheaded many projects. Make a Difference Day started on the South Coast many years ago, and Edna, along with many of the other members, has contributed We Make Clothing, which we give to elementary schools in Coquille, Myrtle Point, and Powers. And it's um, mostly long pants and t-shirts and unisex if we can. 
and hats and things that, so if a kid falls in a mud puddle on the playground or has an accident, um, they don't have to call the parents to come and get them and take them home and they miss the rest of the day of school. We try to give the schools 20 or so outfits that they can let the kids change into dry clothing and stay in school. So that's a nice project. And we also deliver school supplies all over the uh, Coke Hill, Myrtle Point, and Powers areas. And uh, she has volunteered at the Red Cross Blood Drive and has helped for many years. She's worked in um, the food bank and she shopped for needed items. And she's a chairman, she was our Rebecca chairman for the Coke Hill Christmas. We made over 200 of those cloth stockings last year and uh, helped distribute them the night of the Coke Hill Christmas party. And also some of our members worked in handing out the cookies and punch and coffee and things. So we've been very active and she's always stepping up to help in community events. She's also Noble Grand of the Odd Fellows this year, which is a little different. And we've worked together several times. We've been through um, the, the Vice Grand and Noble Grand for Rebecca several times. We sort of have traded places over the years. I think it's five or six times. And she's a special friend and has made our yearbooks for several years. And I have the honor of awarding a merit jewel to her, and it says Rebecca's Merit Jewel. And Edna, would you come up here, please? Sorry about this. this. These are very tiny little latches. There's the. I couldn't begin to do this without all of my sisters and brothers and lodges and every, all the volunteers that has helped me throughout the years. And I just thank you so much for the privilege of being here tonight and giving this honor. Thank you so much. The next award will be presented uh, by the Kukio Rotary Club, uh, and that is the Kukio Rotarian of the Year. So I believe Kathy Simonetti is going to do it, or Sharon Nelson? I'm actually Sharon Nelson. Uh -oh. Sharon Nelson. Yes, I will. Hello, Mark. <laughs> you want the cheat sheet? I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, I'll give it to you anyway. Anyone that can read this print without your glasses, it's a challenge. I don't think I need a cheat sheet. Every year we look forward to finding someone within our Rotary Club who exemplifies what Rotary is all about. And I think the thing that matches this person this year is um, it, he truly does go beyond and, and above. And service above self is one of our, our strong principles within the organization. He is honorable, he's truthful, he is always going to, to try to do what's right for not only our community, but um, just for everybody in, in general. You would be amazed at how many times you will see this person um, out and about. He volunteers at so many different places. Um, most importantly, he does a lot of work during our uh, Gay 90s events, which Rotary helps sponsor. It's hard to continue to talk about someone um, I have such great admiration and respect for. And I would like to have all of you please stand and welcome the Rotarian of the Year, Marty Stone. Oh. <laughs> Speech! 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 Speech!
we we have to do the photo op. Okay. Yeah, photo op. Oh, here you've got a head. Uh oh, we don't need this. How do we want to do this? <laughs> there could be a subtitle for this. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Okay. Uh, I am going to say a couple things. Uh, I, I will keep them, keep them brief. Um, uh, I truly am humbled uh, by this award. Uh, I've had the greatest privilege of being a member of the Cokie Rotary Club for uh, nearly four decades. Uh, it's about 38 years now, going on 39. Uh, and I can tell you, each one of you, that I've had the greatest privilege uh, working with individuals that I consider to be pillars of our community. Not only the, the current members of the Rotary Club, uh, the Bob Maines, the Wayne Nelsons, the Sharon Nelsons, uh, but also folks that have gone on. Names that we remember. The Hank Daughters, uh, the West uh, the Ray Nolts, the Lloyd Marshalls, the, uh, all those, the Laura Jo Hofsitz, um, John Courtney, all these names, the pillars of our community, I've had the greatest privilege of rubbing out elbows with those folks. I'm, I'm most proud uh, of the fact that our Rotary Club uh, truly embodies service above self. And I'm proud of the accomplishments that we've made over the years. And I can just think back of the things that we've done that have been so positive to our community so positive to our uh, world, including things locally, uh, painting the high school, uh, working to build a gazebo down at a certain park, um, providing scholarships to uh, students at the high school, uh, purchasing dictionaries for third graders in the grade school, uh, sponsoring the Easter egg hunt, uh, working every year with the Christmas lights, to purchase Christmas lights and install Christmas lights, uh, providing food baskets uh, through the Elks Club, uh, cutting and delivering firewood to the needy, uh, uh, road cleanups. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. And, and beyond what we do in the community, we also do things in the world. Uh, we are this close to eliminating polio worldwide. Yeah. And that's because the Rodeo of Florida was involved in the project. So again, uh, I am humbled by this award. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking back, I, I think I received this, the, the same award maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, so I must be doing something right. So thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. I've got to keep up yeah. going. I'm glad I'm going to sit down someplace. So um, let's move on. Ernie wants to speak again, maybe? No. no. Okay. You're doing well. Right. <laughs> some drawings. We want to spend some time next uh, with, uh, actually, we want to do some drawings. Uh, I think drawings. Drawings. We want to drive. Diane, give me the high signal back there. Diane, do you want to do a gift this time? Yeah. Uh, what? Can't hear you. Oh, it's a basket oh. from Hoosits. It's a basket from Hoosits, it's and the number bath, is? bath basket. The number is 86 for a basket. Somebody, 86. There we go. Can I draw the next number, please, for a uh, centerpiece? Number three for a centerpiece we have out front. That's no, another centerpiece. Please. Thank you. 94 for a centerpiece. Going, going. Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. this table here. Great. Um, how about another gift other than the centerpiece? One more. One more, and it is. One three four for the city. 
And Diane, one more for a uh, centerpiece, please. 64. 6-4 for a centerpiece. There we go. I think we've got, Diane, about five or six more centerpieces, so we'll do those toward the end of the night. Okay. Um, we want to move into the final phase of this evening's uh, festivities. And the final phase, actually before we do that, I want to ask uh, uh, Mayor Rao to step forward again. I think the mayor is still with us. I know he is. Uh, the mayor is going to present um, a couple of awards uh, that have been added on, uh, which would be the Police Department's uh, Volunteer of the Year and Reserve Officer of the Year. Officer of the year. So, Mayor? How about another congratulations uh, for Judge Stone? Yeah. <laughs> the mic just a little bit. Uh, so, one of the highlights of being mayor is you get to give out awards and cut ribbons and have some of that fun stuff. And uh, this is more of that. This is just a real pleasure because I love our police department. Our guys are great and our volunteers are great. And so before we give out our Volunteer of the Year award, I'd like all of the people with our police department, the volunteers, the officers, the reserve, come up here. Come up up front here, guys. So, I can tell mom that. All right. So, our Volunteer of the Year award goes to a lady who worked with the city and volunteered with the city for years, dedicated countless hours. And I remember I, I, you know, I'd seen her around town before and things of that nature, but once I first became mayor, I just saw this nice, quiet lady working in the office, working away, and just very quiet, doing her job. And in recent years and months, I've gotten to know her much better and, and gotten to know her and her husband and they're great people and dedicated people. And this year's Volunteer of the Year Award goes to this person who, by the way, isn't there because she has nothing better to do. She's got plenty of things to do, but she cares about this community so much that she's volunteered these hours. And God bless these kind of volunteers because we could make city government run without them. So it's my distinct pleasure to give the Volunteer of the Year Award to Mary Jo Brennan. Award, the Reserve Officer of the Year Award, I want to hand over the introduction to our new assistant to the Acting Police Chief and our Reserve Sergeant, Dave Pierce. Uh, let's hear it for Dave. Thank you. Uh, so it's an honor to be able to pass this award out. Uh, I received it myself three years ago uh, while serving under Chief Blue. It's, it's an honor to be able to serve our community in the capacity that a reserve uh, gets to, to work with the community. We get to work with the officers. For many people that don't know what a reserve does, we are um, trained the same as an officer. We haven't gone through the academy the same as they have, but we have gone through uh, reserve academy. We have to take legal classes. 
Uh, we're trained right next with them in firearms. Uh, so part of our job is to uh, see that these guys get to come home at night. Uh, so, and they see that we come home at night. Uh, our, our reserves were small, there's three of us. Um, we have a solo reserve, which is, is an honor to have. Uh, Dennis Hyatt, which couldn't be here tonight, is Coquille Solo Reserve. Uh, as a reserve, we write citations. Uh, we protect our community just the same as an officer. Uh, so it's a great privilege uh, to give this award tonight. Uh, Chris Ohm is our reserve of the year. Uh, he comes all the way from Eugene, where he lives, to spend time with us. Uh, so it's it's a great honor, Chris. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is a great community, very welcoming. Uh, I've been here a couple of years now. Uh, absolutely love it. Uh, if I had my way, I'd be living here. Uh, but really, this award. The only reason I'm up here and I'm getting this is because of the support, dedication, and training of these guys here. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. So let's everybody give a round of applause to the great guys. last-minute changes on our program, which is good news, we do not. Uh, we're getting close to the end, but we still have a few more drawings to go and about four awards to give out, some, um, some important awards. But let's do a drawing or two. Uh, we've got, uh, Diane tells me we have four centerpieces, but five centerpieces, and uh, one gift. So how about a centerpiece number, Diane? for a center big clue. As a chess champion, <laughs> local, state, national, international, he has put the name of the city of Coquille on the map. He is a man of many talents, young man. He is the number one chess player for his age level in the state of Oregon. He was selected as number one tied with the team in New York for the United States. He has been a national masters uh, since April 2014. He's number three in Oregon overall with adults. He is ranked 125th in the world for under 18. He is currently working towards his international master. He has had the opportunity to travel all over the United States with chess and even got to go to Greece this last fall. The name of Coquille, Oregon has been heard around the world. He is an accomplished artist. I've talked to several people recently who did not know that. Um, a few years ago, several people were telling me from the Arts Center, they said, wow, 
You should see this young man in our art class. He is just amazing. And I thought, well, man, and not only is he amazing, um, with his art talent, amazing to be taking classes with senior citizens. Not too many young people would want to do that, but he's just an amazing young man. He completed his Eagle Scout Award in 2015, received his honor in May 2015. His Eagle Scout project involved the Coquille River Walk landscaping. He was highly motivated to finish this project and do his best. He's a quiet young man, but he has an amazing smile. He's the eldest of four children and mentors his brother Joshua with chess and with the scouting program. He is a caring big brother to his two sisters and enjoys his task of being a chauffeur. He's respectful to all ages and his demeanor has shined in our Coquille community. We'll miss him when he goes off to college in the fall. He plans to attend Webster University in St. Louis, Missouri. He won a four-year tuition chess scholarship to study civil engineering. Webster is the top college chess, has the top college chess team in the United States. He plans to attend Oregon Institute of Technology in Klamath Falls to complete his engineering degree. I have known him for seven years. I first heard about him, as I mentioned, about the art lessons. And I learned more about him uh, when his siblings joined my 4-H club. Tried to get him in, but he is just so busy. Also tried to get him in Key Club, but he was helping with uh, chess classes on Tuesdays. The sad part of my little talk with you is that he is not here. I was so disappointed when I showed him the letter and I talked to him a couple weeks ago. And he is in Junction City competing in chess with our Coquille chess team. So I'd like you to uh, give a big round of applause and I'd like your sister, where, come up for Naomi, would you come up? And Ruth, they're both here tonight, to come over and accept this award for Aaron Gravinsky. Here presented to Aaron Gravinsky by the Coquille Chamber of Commerce, and we're just, uh, we're, we're sad he's not here, but, and when you get a chance to see him, would you please tell him congratulations, but he's doing not only what he does best, but he just mentors, and we're just so happy to have him, and thank you sisters for being here to uh, accept this on behalf of their brother. They're pretty talented ladies also, but we're really glad for that, and I'd like to do a little something that a, only an elementary teacher would do. And we're moving right along. I think we're doing good with our schedule. This young lady right here, I called her today. This is Ruth Rubinsky, the younger sister, and Naomi. And today happens to be Ruth's 13th birthday. <laughs> I did that. It's on my 4 sheet, but I got a notice from um, Karen asking for some help. And my key clubbers are all pretty much all gone down to the basketball game in Medford. So they're in my 4 H club, and I said to them, Oh, how would you like to come and help serve at the and, and I talked to Naomi first, she said yes. And then I said, Well, what about Ruth? Do you think I remember it was her birthday tonight? And that went out of my head. So I would like you all to just join me and <coughs> we'll be singing happy birthday to Ruth for oh, 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 Who can start us with that? Do you have some Maybe some? the band, can they play? No, no we'll just go. go. So okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Ruth, happy birthday to you. And what represents the yeah, young, the beginning teenagers that we have, we're here just turning 13, in our community that are willing to be a part of our uh, things happening. So isn't that great that she shared her yes, birthday with us today and yes. doing this? We have two awards left, and I'm going to ask Lynn Kindred to step forward to make the presentation uh, Business of the Year. I want to add a little bit to what Jackie had to say about the good manners of that young man. The one time I played him in a game of chess, <laughs> as he picked up his chess piece and moved it forward, he said, sorry, Mr. Kindred, as he began his total annihilation of the chess while he was playing seven other people at the same time. <laughs> it was not one of my finer moments of the chess game. I was very greatly honored, 
especially honored when I was asked to present the award tonight for Business of the Year, because I am a part of the organization. The Business of the Year does not have to be a profit-making organization, and I assure you we are not, <laughs> which probably tells you who the business is. Now, back in about 1967, oh, I'm sorry, back in about 1967, John and Karen Moore approached Marion Slack with an idea that they had just in the course of conversation. She introduced them to Bob and Dorothy Lay. They got a bunch of other people together and they formed a group with tryouts to put on a short play. Now, that included names like, oh, let me see, Ben and Shirley Barton, um, Gary Seip, the next year Ernie and Diana Amling joined the group, Max Powers, Eloise Freoff, um, Alan Nancy Walsh aren't here, but I'm going to tell a little bit on Nancy anyway. Um, she was scared to death about dancing on stage that first year. She got out of it because she found out that Tom was on the way. <laughs> um, tryouts for that included Marion Slack dancing across the stage with a rose in her mouth. Lorraine Call doing back flips on stage during tryouts. Um, that, ladies and gentlemen, was the beginning of the Sawdust Theater. Now, they were in a building over on the corner of 2nd and Adams Street for many years, but in 1994, that building burnt to the ground. This community got together and put in, through grants, donations, and hard work, somewhere in the neighborhood of $700,000 to a million dollars, to create the facility that the Sawdust Theater is in now. For two years, they acted on the stage here at the community building. We moved into the new building in 1997. In 2002, we developed a long-range plan because we knew we had some things that we needed to do to the building and started um, establishing a building fund. We knew that we had some problems on the roof, even way back then, and we got by as cheaply as we could by making patches and what we thought was doing the right thing, we found out in 2013 that it didn't work. Our roof was failing on both parts of the building and our siding was failing because water was running down inside the walls. Um, with $43,000 in our building fund and we took about $30,000 out of our general operating fund, we have raised, over the last two years, um, oh, another $200,000 or so through fundraising and grants to the point that we have completed the roof on both parts of the building, the old Sears building that is our dressing rooms and our staging area, and the new building that is our auditorium. We put new siding, um, hardy plank, on the south wall and the west wall all the way up along, and on the north wall of the auditorium. We still have about $100,000 worth of work that we need to do on the east wall and the storage building. Not very long ago, we received a $50,000 check from the estate of a former villain in the Sawdust Theater. He was there once, um, as a villain in 1998, but he loved us not all the same. Um, with luck, we will have that building finished by the end of the summer. Currently, the Sawdust Theater is working towards making the theater a year-round facility. The Coquille schools use the district or use the building at no charge for their high school drama and any time that the elementary school wants to use it. The Missoula Children's Theater is there at no charge. Uh, the CREATE Center has used it for recitals. We're working on bringing outside groups for performances, such as the recent concert by Back in Time. 
Right now, our house manager, Kathy Leverin, is working with the Chamber of Commerce, um, Kathy Simonetti, for Mother's Day, and they're going to bring who, Kathy? Oh, you know, I caught me off guard here. The um, new Kingston Trio yes. is oh. going to be in the theater on Mother's Day. Totally forgot, yes. Now this meal. involves... We're having a meal. It's a buffet. Oh, it will be a buffet yes. and theater on Mother's Day with the, with the children of the Kingston Trio. Oh. We are looking forward to that. Um, for 2016, it is our 50th year. We've been there for 50 years, folks, and our play this year is called The Great Riverton Roos, or Beware of the Golden Gambler, <laughs> written by our own actor, dancer, and playwright, Marty Brennan. Marty, stand up and do it. <laughs> the directors are Becky Katz and Nancy Wilson. The Oleos are being directed by Becca Jones and, Mar and Maureen March. I'd like to introduce and ask to come up our president of the board of directors, Ed Tyner, and Catherine Barton, who is our treasurer and in charge of our fundraising for this project. president this year and it gives me great pleasure to present this to you guys and I'll let you take over the mic. Yeah. We want to thank you and a lot of sawdusters in this room here and a lot of people that have supported us and are raised the room. Hey I see some sawdusters. There are sawdusters. People here have donated to our Raise the Roof campaign, and I'm not going to mention names. I'm going to mention organizations because we've raised $161,000 in grants, just grants alone. Started with the Coke Hill Rotary. We didn't even ask them, they asked us to ask them, and they've helped us out twice. And the City of Coke Hill Urban Renewal, Coos County Economic Development, the Coke Hill Indian Tribe Foundation, Ford Family Foundation. Uh, Williams Pipeline Connector, Pacific Connector Pipeline, and Plum Creek. All these people, all together, $161,000 brought into our community to beautify our building and make it dry inside. <laughs> it's better than singing in the rain. And we have big plans to get this. You know, we thought we were out of money, and as Lynn told you, Bob Mock, the villain in 19... 98 don't, gave us $50,000 and with that and hopefully a few more grants and the fundraising activities that we still have going on, we hope to get that west wall, I mean the east wall and done and have everything looking beautiful in the city. So thank you everybody. Every one would be short and sweet. <laughs> Last time I was president. Sweet. I uh, <clears throat> proposed to my blushing little bride back there, but it took her 15 years, 10 months, and 12 hours to say yes. So <laughs> that will not happen again. Uh, um, I think the theater gives us all some place to kind of escape. Uh, a lot of the actors and the oleos for certain um, enjoy it so much. They're all volunteers. It's an uphill battle. Getting volunteers to participate in the theater, but the number one thing that we keep pushing is entertainment and making it an enjoyable evening for everyone. And I hope that in the future we continue to do it, but we need young individuals to replace some of those old, older folks. 
And uh, for last year, I'd like to uh, send my appreciation to Lynn, who was the president that carried us through a lot of this um, budgeting for the roof. Uh, the roof needed to be repaired, and it was uh, in pretty ugly shape. So, and Catherine Barton, with her grant writing abilities and Persistence. Catherine is persistent. <laughs> I worked with her at Menasha and she's very persistent. But as, as a result, we do get our budget. So thank you for everything. Yeah. We haven't been around Catherine Long as far as an Emily Schroeder. This is our 50th season. <laughs> <laughs> Two more things to do and then we're out of here. Uh, the next thing I, I would like to do, if I can spot Diane, is the 50-50 drawing. If anybody purchased any tickets, I think we would draw for the 50-50. I'm sure they want to know the amount. $123, and the winner is... to you. 
Uh, Fran moved to Coquille 40 years ago and became the veteran service officer for the county, which began her lifeline, lifetime commitment in the service of our veterans. She is active in the VFW, American Veterans Association, and Disabled American Veterans. About 15 years ago, Fran was chosen to fill the vacancy on the city council and has been on the council ever since. She has been our most consistent representative with the League of Oregon Cities. Fran has organized the Coquille Day in the pie contest for the Coos County Fair and has been actively involved with the Gay 90 celebration in Coquille. She is, a, she is active with Rotary, Friends of the Carousel Project, and the Coquille Chamber of Commerce. Most of us know Fran as the woman who has volunteered at the Coquille Community Center for over 15 years. Fran Capehart has made a career out of volunteer work that benefits the community and county she lives in. Fran Capehart, the heart of our community. So it's my privilege to introduce again uh, Fran Capehart, citizen of the And so, I don't have anything else to say because you know. <laughs> No, if you care about where you live, get out and do something about it. There's a lot of things to do. Um, I'm no longer here in the community center, but for some reason I don't have any spare time. It's just taken up with other things. So I thank you all for being here tonight. And uh, Kathy, it was great. This is the first time I haven't been involved in the chocolate fantasy. It, it was, was your legacy. Nice. It's your <laughs> legacy. But I just thank you all for all the things you do. I can look around the room and see so many people who volunteer as many hours as I do. And like I said, if you don't have anything to do, believe me, I can tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations uh, to Fars uh, and also to Emily Schroeder uh, for a hundred years of service to our community. We appreciate you folks and family members being here this evening. So thank you so much. A round of applause for those folks also. This evening. If there's nothing else for the good of the order, I have one, old, one final comment to make, and that is actually a request. If any of the uh, any of you folks would be willing to stay with us for a few minutes after the meeting uh, to help us take down the tables and put back the chairs, greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, unless there's anything else for the good of the order, uh, this program is adjourned. Have a safe journey home. Thank you. We'll see you next year.